Hello, everybody. Welcome to the first episode of this series. We are here with Aaron, the leader of Darlu Mode, correct? Actually, I'm uh, the heir to Darlu. You're the heir, all right. Uh, yeah, I'm the heir. But okay. I would say I'm like a daily manager. I uh, work a lot with the locals and not a lot externally in Darlu Mode. All right, so who's the actual leader at the moment? actual leader is uh, a person called Morgini um, he's uh, mainly like Darlumon is very closely tied to the Horde he's kind of the Horde operations guy for Darlumon alright um, yeah. so what's the um, what's the government style of Dara at the moment so in Dara we don't, constitutionally we don't have a definition but the government has, yeah, uh, provincial leaders in the government. So we have like 10 or something provinces, and each province gets two people in government. And so technically, it would be kind of like an oligarchy. Uh, right. on uh, not on paper, but like that's kind of how we work. So the powerful people sit in the government and talk about what we need to there's no ministers or no appointed positions right. uh, you get chosen from your province all right and then um how active is dara like so, early month, uh, a 12 on the stonework census with uh, 39 people we have a little bit higher on our uh, own census um but that's just you know, dual citizens and stuff. That's how every census works. Um, Parliament is uh, very active, I would say. It's one of the more active nations in Haven, uh, apart from Aurora. Um, we have expanded quite, like, pretty fast. Um, and we have integrated a lot of provinces, and we have still made it work, and all the provinces feel good in uh, the system we are in. and. They like to be active in the country, even in our own nation discord. All right. Uh, so can you list off like maybe three or five of your most active towns? So uh, our most active towns would probably be New Tichmarok, which is the state capital of Kutayara. Uh, New Misar, which is the state capital of Eyeko Kionia. Um, Athos, which is the state capital of Dande. Um, then probably Umbrium, which is a newly found, founded city uh, from newly claimed territory. Um, and then maybe I would say uh, Goblinia, which is kind of our base of operations, uh, you could say, where we have our uh, military star and stuff uh, like armory uh, and where the leaders live mostly so would you say that's the capital then uh, our capital is actually a, a town called Astartes uh, which has been kind of under construction it's mostly our capital because of its geographical uh, location uh, yeah. but it's not a sprawling city Koblina is kind of a uh, uh, city that is run by the Horde and Darlumon, so it's kind of uh, a place where all the nations in Horde can meet, and the leaders own the city, the leaders of the Horde. Alright, and then let's head into economy. So is there like an open job system that, that works in Dara at the moment? So in Dara you kind of do... Uh, we, there's no appointed jobs uh, for anyone not to make money. Uh, we have uh, a lot of different businesses. The biggest one would be Dragon Smart in Defir, which runs very independently as and as at this point probably has no association with uh, Darlimond. Um, there's building companies all over. There's the university in Kutayara. There's uh, fishing is very prevalent. Um, as the country is really spread out in population, 
there's no like metropolitan center. So fishing and mining, of course, is it comes to a lot of the money that people make in this country because it's so big. So there's a lot of resources to take from. So I would say we are resource rich. Uh, that makes our economy big. All right. And then let's hop over to military. So I heard that you said that you have like a military city that that's kind of where your leaders and stuff live. But um, let's actually talk about the military itself. So what's around what's about the number of soldiers in your military, not including like mercs or like um, foreigners that are in the army and stuff? So, in, independently, our military would uh, come to around 25 people. Uh, a lot of them are, as the national military usually is, um, uh, not the best of fighters. But we have uh, uh, some good fighters, which uh, pop up in wars all over Bratnir. Um, I say we can arm ourselves pretty good, and we have, uh, we will have the system to... Uh, be ready for a war, uh, even though it's not that active of a military. All right, and then I know I don't have this on the list. I kind of forgot to put it there, but I'm just going to ask it anyway. So we're going to cover a little bit of diplomacy, if you don't mind. So if you want to go over maybe some of your biggest allies and alliances, and then also, if you want to, completely up to you, if you want to name like some countries that you have some tension with. Okay, so, of course, uh, Darlemon is very closely tied to the Horde. So the Horde's allies and enemies kind of go hand in hand with us. But we do have uh, special ethnic groups, uh, a lot of refugees in our country, that uh, might create tension with specific countries. There was a country named Sophrania in Umarnu, um, which uh, a lot of our population uh, originated from or were thrown out uh, from that place. Um, it would also uh, have maybe the Eastern. Uh, we might have tensions with it because of uh, disputes with them in the past and currently as uh, are going to war with the Horde. Um, those allies which aren't really uh, too closely tied to the Horde would maybe be other haven nations like Mithusu and Boldorov. Um, and also, uh, more specifically, you could say uh, horde vessels like Ulara, uh, which uh, we are closely tied to through uh, the people that live in our country, especially Vanir too, uh, which because of uh, olden refugees, we uh, closely associate to um all right let's let's talk about religion now so do you have well does dara have like one big religion and also are there any religious sites or large churches or anything of the matter so uh, in dara there's total religious freedom it's uh, very spread out um our like Kind of historical religion would be Lunaism, which was founded around January 2021. Um, it's not uh, that big of a religion right now, but it has a very, um, a very steadfast uh, following. Uh, we also have Nasib, which is the religion of Qutayar, which is which makes up one third of our. Uh, population so they also make uh most of the re religious population also have solianen which is spread out uh, all over the country uh, like with the rest of ratnir for example we have uh, the oldest solianen shrine in haven uh, which is in north Darlimon, which was made to protest the rise of lunaism in that area which is a religious site to see, I would say. Um, big churches, there's not a lot of them. Um, but there's small churches in the areas where there are religion, like Gigni, which is a lunar city, 
and uh, Kuta New Tishmarok, which is uh, Kuta Yaren, or Nasib city. Uh, also New Mishar, where a lot of the uh, like ethnic Lunas live, uh, has a big religious uh, population. All right, and then for the final section, which is the, the big section, I'm going to leave it to you to just go over whatever history you want to about Dara. So, uh, Dara, uh, the, far, the furthest back you can trace uh, Dara would be to the what's was called the Holy Chavkri Empire, which uh, joined the Second Empire of Alderash uh, around the time it formed. Dara hasn't, or the nations Dara were, which was mostly just before the duration of its history, uh, hasn't been independent. It's been part of Old Rash for a long time. Chavkri mostly was only, never independent, only for a short time after Old Rash fell. And then Chavkri was uh, part of the Union of Haven until it split up and uh, Two or one African province form uh, the Horde with Venovia and Dorant, which is kind of where our um, history really starts from uh, during the formation of the Horde, where you can trace it to actual people that now rule the country helped establish the Horde back then. There was a head diplomat between the Horde and the Union of Haven and Morgini, it was the leader of Laurentides, which is one of the founding members of the Horde. Um, then uh, we, yeah, the provinces split up uh, uh, into like eight provinces, and they took different directions. Three provinces, uh, which was led by me, staying in the Union of Haven until it broke up, uh, where then the rest of the provinces joined the Horde. We still weren't united as a country like we are now, um, but we were all part of the Horde at that point. And uh, the big World War broke out uh, this July, um, which, um, which created a lot of tension and a lot of uh, the leaders now got really tired. So it took a little bit of time before we could gather ourselves back. Uh, after that war. Uh, and in around late September, we started talking about reuniting again. But there was uh, a lot of bad history connected to the Chef Green name, uh, which uh, occupied most of the territory of the people who was thinking of forming Dar Lumond. Uh, but around October, uh, a founding member called Salem which I will come back to, uh, bought uh, a province from Alfheim called Rexold. Uh, at that point, we controlled four provinces, which were um, Laurentides, controlled by Morgini, Dande, controlled by Chid and Tofu, the Rexold, called, controlled by Salen, and uh, Chavkri, or Paragonite Chavkri, uh, led by Ashuk, or War Daddy. Um, and then we formed Darlumon from four provinces. Um, then Kitayara got its independence from Dande inside of Darlumon to become a separate province. Then uh, the provinces of Nebula and Defir uh, and uh, um, Bohemian Grove joined uh, joined Darlumon. And we vassalized uh, Ularia. Uh, then we grew uh, to get territories from Ellis uh, and then had Pat with us and also uh, Umbria, which was uh, an area left uh, uninhabited, which formed a new city or a city state within Darlemont. Lastly, we sanctuary broke up because of the fall of the Phoenix Imperium. And uh, yeah, we. Uh, got dr uh, drawn into a war, or it didn't evolve into a war, but a conflict with a newly founded nation called Kurndarul. Uh, then uh, we supported uh, someone called Lenoria, which fought, fought Kurndarul. Uh, and Kurndarul uh, basically joined Darlemont uh, under what is now known as Lenoria. 
which is just a different leadership in the same area. And that's kind of the extent which we are now. The leaders uh, are all people of provinces. Uh, the person Salem, which was a founding member, um, which bought one of our provinces, also uh, sadly tried to sell it at some point, uh, which uh, made us force him to exile. So he is no longer a part of Parliament. But all of the original leaders except Salem are still here. We keep growing. Uh, the founding leaders uh, were all a part of Chavkri. Me, Morgini, Chid, and Ashrik were all there during the fall of Chavkri. And Chid was actually the leader of Chavkri back then. Uh, so it's basically, uh, it's not a completely new country. It has old leaders, but it has a new idea, which uh, has shown to work as we have grown bigger than ever. Chavkri could be, and uh, we're bigger on the international stage and more stable than we ever were before. That's uh, uh, important history of Dorlemont. All right, and then I guess to finish it off, is there any ra like random info or just like anything you want to say about the country at all? Uh, the country uh, all the way back was founded by people that are now in staff, like Athas in Polish Sweden. It has a, it has a deep history, uh, which many don't know because it hasn't been independent for most of its history. Um, uh, the country is very diverse. There's a lot of refugee populations in the different provinces, and it's ruled by a lot of different people. You have a whole province which is controlled by Paragon, the mercenary group, you have a whole province which is more, uh, made up of refugees from uh, Umarne. You have a whole province made up of uh, of um, ethnic Ethereans, which uh, are a uh, ethnic religious group. Uh, which is really cool that we can be so diverse and work so closely together with no tensions at all. Uh, we're doing so much better than I thought most people would think we could do after our history. So I'm just uh, we just continue growing. Um, yes, people have to look out. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, that's gonna be it for our little interview and chat here i want to thank you for having me over and letting me make this video and i'm going to leave the discord for dara in the description as well as any transcripts or just anything that dara wants to be shown that will all be in the description and make sure you all join stoneworks and i'll see you all later goodbye any final words Bye. <laughs> All right. Goodbye, everybody.